Sweet Summer Days is happening now at Whole Foods Market with sales on the juiciest fruits of the season, organic peaches, organic cantaloupes, blueberries, and strawberries. That's an epic fruit salad. You'll also find sweet sales on fresh Alaska sockeye salmon and halibut and grill-ready fruity marinades. Keep your wallet happy with aisles of savings from 365 by Whole Foods Market, like sparkling waters, frozen fruits, and snacks. Sweeten your summer at Whole Foods Market. Terms apply. Here's what Salt Lake's talking about. If you grew up in Utah, there's a very good chance you have a memory of hoagie yogi slash teriyaki sticks. Maybe you ate there after school. Maybe you hated it and never noticed that the chain disappeared. Whether or not you're in on this iconic Utah establishment, you're about to be. So buckle in for a trip to Lagoon Amusement Park. It's Monday, July 24th. I'm Ali Vallarta, and this is CityCast Salt Lake. Meg Walter, features writer for the Deseret News. I have to tell you, as someone who didn't grow up in Utah, I am or have become familiar with a lot of Utah food staples, in part thanks to you. So dirty sodas, funeral potatoes, crown burger, I'm on it. What I learned from you just recently is that I now have to add hoagie yogi slash teriyaki sticks to the list. Please give me the skinny. What is this? Okay, so hoagie yogi was a chain of restaurants that sold, wait for it, hoagies and frozen yogurt. Hoagie Yogi. Oh, Get it? Okay, yeah. Yeah. Not gonna lie, delicious. Del- like, there's nothing better to me than a build your own sandwich situation, but it didn't have that mm-hmm. Subway smell. Like, no shade to Subway, but you walk into a Subway and you're like, something's not right. Like, there's yeah. a there's something here. Some meat's turned, and it's nationwide. Every Subway chain has that peculiar something about it. Not Hoagie Yogi. Hoagie Yogi was fresh. They had like sprouts. They had a variety of breads freshly baked. I don't know if they're freshly baked. In my mind, they're freshly baked. Um, A really good sandwich artist would put together this hoagie for you. You could get a side of chips. And then the frozen yogurt to me was really the star of the show. They did a blackberry frozen yogurt that you could get in a waffle cone. And the thing about frozen yogurt is that you can put a ton away. Like ice cream, you're going to get full eventually, not frozen yogurt. You could eat an entire pint of frozen yogurt and be like, I could do a little more. So you would get these giant waffle cones full of blackberry frozen yogurt. Some of my happiest memories were spent at Hokey Yogi. Then later they decided, hey, we're not Japanese, but let's add some Japanese food to our menu and opened a teriyaki sticks like at a separate counter. So you'd walk in and there'd be hoagie yogi and then off to the side would be teriyaki sticks, which sold chicken bowls with like a really starchy rice and a teriyaki sauce that I believe was mostly corn syrup mixed with like soy sauce and then like Cisco chicken, whatever. Disgusting, but also delicious, Mm -hmm. you know? So Hoagie Yogi had something for you depending on whatever mood you were in. You could get it at Hoagie Yogi and it was a magical place. Yeah. Well, and I have been told because I reached out to a couple of friends that grew up in Utah before we had this conversation not not that I don't believe you. I was like, are you fact-checking me? <laughs> but I have been told that anyone who grew up in Utah in, like, the early millennium has a hoagie yogi slash teriyaki sticks memory. Absolutely. I have a friend that I talked to this morning who grew up in Moab and was like, I went there every day after school. Nay, my fourth, fifth, and sixth grade baseball teams were all sponsored by hoagie yogi slash teriyaki sticks. Like, this is core memory territory. What is your best hoagie yogi slash teriyaki sticks memory? It's kind of a tragic story. And I'm sorry to take us to this dark place. Um, I can handle it. But I was in the car with my mom and my grandma and my two siblings. And we were on our way back from St. George. We had gone down for a weekend. And I, there was a gas station and I believe Scipio that had a hoagie yogi attached, which many did at the time before the great Hoagie Yogi rapture. 
And we all got our sandwiches and my mom got this beautiful sandwich that had like sprouts and it had freshly sliced cucumbers and it had banana peppers and really good turkey. And she went to get in the car and the sandwich fell on the ground. And my mother, bless her heart, started crying. She was so devastated to have lost this perfect sandwich core memory for me, you know, and it really made me every time I ate Hoagie Yogi after that, I was like, do not take this for granted. Understand Mm -hmm. the value of what's in front of you because it could be gone at any moment. On that note, it was like this chain basically, as I understand it, evaporated. Tell me about your journey to rediscover the Utah teriyaki sticks. You know, I feel bad because I wasn't paying close enough attention to realize that these chains were disappearing from across our state. And had I known, you know, some sort of activism would have taken place, a GoFundMe or we would have rallied the troops. Um, So I'm into adulthood, not really understanding that these things were vanishing from underneath my feet um, until recently when someone, my friend, Scott Westman, who's a great follow on Twitter, posted a photo in front of the teriyaki sticks at Lagoon, saying, I believe this is the last teriyaki sticks on earth. What's the situation? Did no one tell the manager? Something funny. I was like, oh my gosh, there's only one of these left. I must visit. Um, and so I did obviously went to Lagoon, march through, um, they have all like the arcade games and the terror ride and, uh, it's over by the entrance to the white roller coaster, which I cannot believe is still functioning. Yeah. Uh, and there it is. Teriyaki sticks, just like a lone little Island in the middle of Lagoon. Um, there's a crew of 12 year olds operating it. Adorable. So confused as to why I was there was a, was a photographer. Um, ordered my teriyaki sticks. It still hits. It's still good. Um, apparently, it's not chicken that has been in the freezer since 2006, but they have like a different distributor now. They use the same teriyaki sticks recipes. Sadly, no hoagie yogi available. You cannot get one of those sandwiches or that blackberry frozen yogurt. That is lost to time and a real shame, in my opinion. When you were there as a elder community uh-huh. leader, <laughs> thank you for that. Did you do any education about the like lore of hoagie yogi teriyaki six with these twelve year olds? Did I lecture the twelve year olds? Uh, Did they roll their eyes at you? <laughs> it would have been like when I tell my kids about CD players. You know, it would have been like there's just no way for me to relate to you on this. It seems really important to you, but like. I just, there's nothing there for me to hold on to. So I didn't waste my breath, but I wanted to say like, do you understand what you represent? Yeah. The generation of Utahns who looked to this institution for a little bit of comfort, you know, for a tasty snack, for a delicious blackberry frozen yogurt. It really meant something special back in its day. Sweet Summer Days is happening now at Whole Foods Market with sales on the juiciest fruits of the season. Organic peaches, organic cantaloupes, blueberries, and strawberries. That's an epic fruit salad. You'll also find sweet sales on fresh Alaska sockeye salmon and halibut and grill-ready fruity marinades. Keep your wallet happy with aisles of savings from 365 by Whole Foods Market, like sparkling waters, frozen fruits, and snacks. Sweeten your summer at Whole Foods Market. Terms apply. Well, I have to ask you, Meg, because a single day admission at Lagoon has gone up 14% this year. It is now $100 for one adult to go to Lagoon. Oh, $100? Did you not, do you not know this? No, I, I hate to flex, but I had like a press entrance, so. Okay, it, it is $100 for an adult to spend the day at Lagoon now. That's insane. Oh my gosh. Right. So I just feel the need to point out that these teriyaki sticks are paywalled. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It's $100 plus, I think it was like $12 for the bowl of teriyaki sticks. (laughs) That's a $112 bowl of caro syrup and chicken. 
Sure, but like still less than an hour of therapy revisiting my childhood. Good point. Good point. You know, you know. Yeah. Tell me what was going through your mind and body as you ate this bowl in the middle of Lagoon. Like, was there any part of you that was like, oh, it's not the same? If I'm being completely honest, the chicken's a little different. Um, I think it's like salad chicken, you know, the salad bar, grilled chicken. I'm using quotes. So it, it was like, I was in Provo recently and I drove through BYU campus, which is a place where I spent six years of my life, you know, and had so many memories. And it's like, it's a very weird experience to be back in that place because it's like, this meant so much to me, but it's not what it was and it never will be again. And that's just the nature of nostalgia, right? Like it's almost worse to revisit it. Yeah, It's kind of better to just leave it in your mind as this beautiful thing that you can always treasure and never try to recreate. And eating that bowl of teriyaki sticks felt a little like, this is a little bit of a bummer, you know? It's not what it used to be. I had a similar experience recently with a Slurpee. That was kind of my hoagie yogi teriyaki sticks with Slurpees because I just grew up somewhere incredibly hot and that was like what we did. And I have had 23 cavities in my life and it is like explicitly, I think, because of how many Slurpees I drank as a child. What happens to us in adulthood? Because a Slurpee used to be so refreshing and now I drink when I'm like, oh man, like I'm not going to make it through this 12 ounces. No, I feel I'm sweating. My body feels heavy. Like I'm unwell now drinking a Slurpee. Yeah, you can feel your blood sugar rise. You know your body is in distress six ounces in. Yeah, but I almost wish that I like hadn't done it. You know, I almost wish I'd just let the past be in the past. Exactly. Some things are just better left. It's like reviving Saved by the Bell, you know, or any of these new shows. Like, we didn't need Fuller House. No one's watching Fuller House. It will never be the same. You know, we just need to let the past stay in the past. Yeah. So, I mean, on that note, like, would you eat at this Utah teriyaki sticks again? Um, can I get sued if I say no? I don't <laughs> <laughs> I would not. I would not. You would not. I would not. Um, And I think partly because I'm not 10 anymore and my corn syrup tolerance is lower than it used to be. And for the reasons already stated, like it was a fun thing I used to love. And now I've had to find new fun things to love. One of the things that your story left me wondering is why these hoagie yogi slash teriyaki sticks all disappeared, which... Side note, I just love a business that has a forward slash in the name. That's so good. What happened? Because they were valued pretty highly. They were, I mean, if there was one in Provo and one in Moab, like that's some real chain business. It's an insult to journalists to call me a journalist because I'm not, it's not really what I do. But I did make some efforts to reach out to a few people one of which being the former owner and founder of the Hoagie Yogi Teriyaki Sticks. And he never responded to my LinkedIn message. But from what I found from some online digging, a private equity firm bought them. Uh, They were supposed to do all of the expansion and growth and marketing. And instead, it just turned into them charging a lease fee every month. And so they slowly started to disappear until there was one. Is there something comparable now, Meg, to the the Utah teriyaki sticks? Like or the hoagie yogi teriyaki sticks hybrid? Like, do we have a something on par now? I mean, I think Swig. I think Swig is one of those things that outsiders are like, what is going on here? But insiders are like, if you know, you know. Mm-hmm. This is where we go. This is what we do. This is what we put in our bodies. Doesn't have to make sense to anyone else. In fact, it's better if it doesn't. It's better if we have like our own cool little thing just for us. Yeah. It's also like the after school sort of treat. Yeah, absolutely. Um, As far as like actual food, I feel like it's a, you're a Jimmy John's or you're a Jersey Mike's person now and it's probably how it's going to stay. Well, before I let you go, I have to ask you, I mean, it sounds like the Utah teriyaki sticks that we have right now isn't quite scratching your childhood itch no but if we could resurrect hoagie yogi slash teriyaki sticks as they were around this state would you be willing 
in lieu to sacrifice crown burger or swig? No. No. I'm sorry. I hate to say that. I hate to admit it. But those those two things have just become more valuable to me in this day and age. Meg Walter, features writer for the Deseret News. Here's to leaving the past in the past. But always remembering the blackberry frozen yogurt in a giant waffle cone that was the size of my torso. And your mother's lost sandwich, gone but not forgotten. Bless her. Today is Pioneer Day, a state holiday commemorating the arrival of Mormon settlers in the Salt Lake Valley. It's not for everyone, which is why Salt Lake has its own legacy of alternative celebrations. One of those is to celebrate Pie and Beer Day instead. The OG Pie and Beer Day celebration is back downtown at Beer Bar this year. There will be 24 brewers and bakers working together to create tasty pairings. And if you want to pop by, I'll be there from noon to 4 p.m. slinging pies as a volunteer. This year, it's a fundraiser for the Wildlife Rehabilitation Center of Northern Utah. Today, Monday, July 24th, at Beer Bar, it's 21 and up, and a $40 entry gets you five pairings. See you there. That is all for us today here on CityCast Salt Lake. Thank you for listening. We will be back tomorrow morning with more from around this city. Bye.